It's no secret that the world of Warhammer 40k isn't the most pleasant universe. Fun to play and sure, but not the kind of future for humanity most would aspire to. Well, neither, I would argue, is the comparatively similar in concept video game taking the community by storm. May I present freedom and democracy in digital form? Helldivers 2 for the PC and PlayStation. Inspired by both 40k and Starship Troopers, the movie, Helldivers is an incredible third-person shooter that uses the same satirical framework for its world as those properties that inspire it, but with a more modern twist. I'm not the first to make this comparison, it's obvious and apparent to anyone familiar with these franchises, but what is not apparent is how much more relatably Helldivers comments on the human condition. I'm Elikidra, and please allow me to bring you into the loop why Helldivers has more effective satire than Warhammer 40k. So without further ado, let's begin. Satire isn't exactly easy to convey to an audience. You have to strike a balance between conveying a realistic dynamic between the satirical entity and the fictional people interacting with that entity, and laying it on so thick that it stops being satire and is just a fictionalized version of a real concept. Consumers need to, at least for a bit, forget that what they are consuming is satirical. What the hell is even that? The characters, at least, need to take their satire seriously. The problem comes in when the consumers start taking the satire seriously, or fail to notice the story is satirical altogether. So why does Helldiver's satire resonate so much more easily with us than other IPs? Well, there are two basic reasons why Helldiver's satire works so well. The first all comes down to familiarity. We recognize what we're seeing in the government of Super Earth. Honestly, it's a lot of the same imperialist tendencies we saw in our own governments in response to modern events. Helldivers is classic Horatian satire. Of the three major types, this is the one meant to be funny, or a comical take on a real-life phenomenon. Or is someone going to really try and tell me that the phrase, how about a cup of liberty, is meant to be taken seriously? How about a nice cup of liberty? Terrorism in Europe and the Americas spawned a lot of the same rhetoric that we see fully on display in Helldivers. The same things we often see satirized on SNL or The Daily Show. I think a lot of people who grew up in the wake of these events have had to come to terms with the fact that just because a person or a government is fighting someone evil doesn't necessarily mean that they are good or altruistic. Sometimes they're just being opportunistic and using explicitly good things like freedom and democracy as buzzwords to cover up their actual motivation. What about people who say you're only interested in the Middle East for oil? What? Huh? Oil? At least in real life, our governments are usually fighting people who deserve it, while they capitalize on events to line their coffers and expand their influence. Hey, if you don't like America, then you can get it. The bots and Helldivers are apparently just a splinter colony from Super Earth, who simply wish to live under a slightly less managed democracy. And the bugs? Well, they just happen to produce an oil-like substance that fuels faster than light travel. And Super Earth was farming them before they broke free and all the variants we fight are Earth experiments gone wrong. Who's the bad guy again? And this satire hits all the harder for those of us who grew up in the aftermath of 9-11. Imagine that instead of living through the turn of the century, you grew up in a pre-advanced civilization where all the problems of your society have been seemingly solved. There's no obvious classism or racism or overt disparity from one group of people or nation to another. It might be easy to miss how that society outsourced its othering and exploitation to other groups outside the society, and painted them as evil with propaganda that lacks any and all nuance. Warhammer, on the other hand, pulls its inspiration from the authoritarian and xenophobic regimes of the 20th century. Not much humor there. This is Manipian satire, meant to highlight the evil in a society in an unusual way perfect for the grim, dark, fantastical reality of the 40k universe. So, why do different types of satire matter? Well, the humorous Horatian satire is much easier to swallow than Manipian. Jokes soften the criticism and are less likely to put people on the defensive. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> 
something we can't say for the often controversial perception of Warhammer 40k. The world of Warhammer is not a friendly or a pleasant one. It is a desolate, lonely, and downtrodden place. The common man toils away to fuel a war machine that just barely keeps mankind to power in the galaxy. Thousands are sacrificed every year to the Emperor of all mankind in order to maintain the barrier between reality and the Immaterium, where the gods of chaos await their chance to fill the galaxy with madness and death. To the outside observer, the game feature the Space Marines, or Astartes, unaging super soldiers created and tasked with defending and preserving the Imperium as it is. There's no impetus to improve conditions for the average Imperium citizen, only destroy their enemies and honor the Emperor. From the outside, they may seem benevolent and even gothic metal awesome. And, well, yes they are, but... They also maintain and support an authoritarian hellscape, so let's not start simping just yet. This is the part where my comments may become saturated with the endless debate of whether or not the Imperium of Man is fascist. Well, I'm not here to weigh in on that debate. We're here to talk about why Helldivers is more enjoyable and effective satire. The premise of our debate hinges on the fact that both Helldivers and Warhammer are satirical. Here's one of many, many quotes from Games Workshop Limited acknowledging the satirical nature of their IP and reminding us that the Imperium is not aspirational or something to be admired. There are no angels in the Warhammer universe. It's all grimdark. That's not to say it's not a fun series and entertaining IP. I for one find Warhammer lore fascinating. So why do I and others find more reason to rest on our laurels in the Helldivers universe? Well, I'd argue that those elements stem more from the Starship Trooper side of the Helldivers inspiration pool, and that we personally identify more with the satirical and humorous elements of the more modern IP. So let's explore that in more detail. Starship Troopers is a heavier source of inspiration for Helldivers than Warhammer. You can even debate as to whether or not Warhammer inspired anything. Still, I find the Warhammer comparison is apt due to the baffling number of people who not only do not understand that Warhammer and Helldivers are satirical, but actually take the machismo heroics of the title seriously. Helldivers and Starship Troopers, however, take place close enough to modernity that we can easily identify with the concepts featured. So let's examine that by starting with the first facet of our usual grading format. Story. Helldivers is pretty story light, to be honest. Much of what I needed to know for this video required research outside of the game itself. However, it does mirror many of the major themes of Starship Troopers, and some of those found in Warhammer. Many of Super Earth's problems are caused by Super Earth. They created the conflicts with the bots and the bugs due to constraints of their rhetoric. They need to farm the bugs, so they're monsters that must be controlled. The bots want to be socialists and splinter from Super Earth. Better wipe them out and keep that from happening. While Starship Troopers definitely has a stronger aesthetic influence on Helldivers, the concept of constantly being boxed into a war footing because your rhetoric doesn't allow for different opinions is very, very Warhammer. Good theming and very good world building. I can't in good conscience give a game with this little story a stellar grade, even when what little story there is is done so well. B minus. Combat. Helldivers Combat is one of its best features. No surprise there, it's pretty much the game's only feature, so it damn well better be. There's an obvious focus on keeping controls fluid. A big problem with third person shooters is that they often lock the characters into perspectives and control schemes that limit the control and feel stiff. Even better ones like Mass Effect do this to some extent. The stiffness is not their intention, just the result of designing character controls so that they function in the near limitless possible positions in the many different environments of the game. It's a security measure, to keep the game from breaking down. Helldivers, however, is as smooth as any first-person shooter, smoother than some. The enemy factions assail you with numbers, mostly. 
but their variety of different forms, and the weak points meant to give you a quick way to bring even the toughest adversaries down with enough skill, make them a much more enjoyable combat experience than some of the more standard first-person or third-person shooters. Definite A. It's clear that this is where most of the development was focused, as it should have been. Structure. Helldivers is still new at the time of this video's release, and I could harp on and on about release bugs like getting trapped in the cryopod wing on allied ships, or waiting days to get your special mission rewards. But at this time, those bugs have been cleared up pretty well, and I can't fault their debugging team at least. It took more than a little digging, and at least one Google search to find out where to purchase all the different types of unlockables. Maybe I could have paid more attention during the tutorial, but... Really, there is a cleaner, more concise way to convey these to the player. Four different menus to outfit your character with new unlocks seems a bit excessive to me. Best I can give it is a C, as I did find everything eventually, and the bugs, none of which were game-breaking, got fixed early and thoroughly. I've been really enjoying the game, so I'm pleased to grant Helldivers 2 an overall score of B+. And cross my fingers in the hopes that we get an even more in-depth look at the Helldivers universe someday. As much fun as the combat is, it was the irreverent comedy of the game, Satire, that originally got me interested in the first place. If I wanted to play a storyless shooter with no stakes, I have plenty of options out there to pick from. Video games are escapist media, and me personally, I find it easier to get lost in a world with an interesting story than one without. That's what attracted me to Warhammer initially, lore videos on YouTube. Next thing you know, I'm picking out Salamander minis. I just have a little trouble sharing the community with people who come to meetups wearing Nazi memorabilia. Fortunately, Helldivers doesn't have that problem. Hopefully I didn't just jinx it, but the vast majority of the Helldivers community is in on the joke, and even often play into them by calling people who make Helldivers lore videos traitors to Super Earth and managed democracy. There hasn't been an incident yet, but I'm optimistic, given the reasons why people find Helldivers satire so much more digestible than Warhammers. Maybe timing plays a factor. Modern man is pretty disillusioned these days. And maybe the games attract different kinds of people. No surefire way to know, honestly. But I'm glad Arrowhead Studios has managed to avoid most of these pitfalls. And hey, maybe Warhammer will get there someday too. It's not that hard to see that Warhammer is meant to be a tragic tale. Is it? I'm Elikidra, and thanks for allowing me to bring you into the loop on Helldivers 2 by Arrowhead Studios. This has been why Helldivers satire is more effective than Warhammer 40Ks. Thanks for watching! So like and subscribe if you found my video enjoyable. And please leave a comment below as the discourse is my favorite part of making these videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.